So we're going to put our Pertronics uh, electronic ignition kit into this uh, Super A here. This is a 49 Super A. So first thing we're going to do is disconnect uh, the battery. So let's do that. Alright, so now we removed our positive and negative side from our battery cable. This is a negative ground 12 volt system. So we have a 12 volt battery and in this case we have a coil with a built-in resistance. There's no external ball ballast resistor. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to pull off the distributor, uh, leaving the wires on and everything, and then we'll do our next step. And before we pull off our distributor, we've made a little mark with a uh, graphite from a pencil, just to make sure we are not dummies when we put on the distributor cap. Um, but we shouldn't have any problems getting the distributor cap back on right, but just in case, always put a little mark there with some pencil uh, in case you're having a bad day. You don't want to put this on wrong or something, but it should be pretty easy not to screw this up. So now we've pulled off the distributor cap, and I pulled the wire off the coil and snug the cap up here front out of the way. And now we can see where we need to work. We need to take off uh, the rotor now, or Yep. Uh, take off that rotor there and this dust cap. So now we've taken off our uh, rotor and our dust cap. And you can see the points in the condenser. See it's grubby in there too. So now we got to take out the condenser and take off this armature as well and take this off right here. Alright, so we removed the wire that came from the uh, coil to the lug. We remove the lug completely. The insulator from the distributor. We remove the points. We remove the condenser, uh, the cap, the dust cap, and the rotor. And now we are in the guts of it. So <clears throat> now we got a nice clean hole here, and we still leave that post on. We have the two holes that the condenser and the points came off, and we've cleaned this up as well as we can on the inside and these are the parts we're putting in so here's the electronic ignition sensor and here's the magnet that rides on the rotor armature there and then we got some parts here uh, we got all right so these are the parts that came with our ignition so we're going to want to put these little nuts and lock washers on hold the sensor to the space plate and then we're going to install it inside of the uh, distributor. Alright, so we pull these wires and this boot in here and seat it the boot in there so we have the wires and a nice little seal here. And this simply screws on. There's two holes in this plate. I'm not going to really show you, but it goes in like this. And the one hole you can see right there. <coughs> That's where the uh, points used to attach to and then there's a hole right behind here where the condenser used to attach to. So we attach that plate with the two screws provided and then we'll show you the next step. And here's a quick tip for you to prevent you from getting angry and mad at this thing for about 15 minutes. Take this sensor off before you even try to put this plate on because you'll never get this screw in here in with the sensor in the way because it bridges across here and you can't get a screwdriver in there and you can't get that screw in straight. So take the sensor off, and then put the plate on, and then put the sensor back on, all right? All right, so we put the plate on, those screw there, and the screw kind of hidden behind that sensor. Then we put the sensor back on with these little nuts here, and now we've kind of got our wire nice tension. We adjust, you can adjust your tension here to adjust the length of the wire I want just a nice drip loop in there and we're ready for the next step which is to put on <coughs> this magnet thing so slide that on should snug right down like that when it's on correctly and that is there's magnets in here that spin around and this sensor senses the magnets inside of this collar 
and then that causes it to trigger a signal to send it up to your coil to send uh, juice to your distributor. So now we're going to see how the dust plate fits on. I've read that the dust plate doesn't fit onto these sometimes, um, but we'll do that a try real quick. And no, the dust plate does not fit on. It interferes with the travel of this, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put the rotor back on. there. Looks like the rotor just pretty much contacts the top of this. So let's put the cap back on and uh, do the rest of the wire. Alright, so now we have those two cables that run outside and we uh, crimped on ends. I didn't take any off. I left a generous amount of uh, wire on here. And we're at, once we attach to the coil we'll have a nice drip loop. I like drip loops so that if you get water it doesn't run into the electrical device and we'll clean it up with a twist tie. So on this we look at our diagram and the black goes to the negative and red goes to the positive. So the red wire goes to the same side that our uh, starter wire does, our on off button, and the black wire will go to this side. So let's hook those up. There you go. We've got the you know black attached to the negative side, red attached to the positive side. Same side is where the power comes from the starter switch. We've got a nice drip loop here, so water runs down, drips off the bottom here. We'll probably tie that up here in a second, but <clears throat> I want to first try it out. So <clears throat> let's uh, hook up our battery cables. I always disconnect both, so let's put the positive then the negative. And then we'll give it a start. Now be warned, once you start it, you might have to still adjust your timing. The fellow I know who puts in lots and lots of these says that lots of times when you put in the electronic ignition on something that had point condenser, that you will be adjusting the timing after. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll hope that it just starts up and we don't need to adjust it. The timing that is. So anyway, uh, let me just hook this battery up and we'll give it a try. So, after we got our new finangled uh, electronic starter on here, which I still have to tie up here and make it a little bit nicer, um, change the fuel line, and put new plugs in it, uh, change the oil, and had to advance the, the timing a little bit because it threw the timing off. We started up and it was kind of fluttering, so I put a new fuel line on because I was getting air in my fuel line up here, and now why don't we take a listen and you can hear this uh, electronic start or electronic ignition. It sounds real nice. Yeah, idle's almost nothing now. I thought I'd uh, neglected to throw this in, but how to adjust the timing. So if you're having problems with your timing, or in general to adjust the timing on this, there's uh, two bolts right here. There's one outside here, and there's one that's hard to get to on the inside. Just loosen those two bolts. You don't want it to fall off. And then scratch a line on the top here, and on the top of the distributor body, and here, so you can mark where the original position is. And this, you know, you want this just loosened a little bit. And with the tractor running, rotate the distributor. Uh, rotate it up or down. You'll be able to have to listen to it, okay? And that's the way to adjust the uh, timing on this, the simplest way. Um, you can follow the manual way and find top dead center and then line up number one plug and adjust it that way. Or with the tractor running, and this loose but not super loose, right? You don't want it falling out. But you can just slowly move this up and down and then figure out how you're advancing or retarding your uh, 
your uh, distributor, okay? That's how I did it, at least. And it ended up having to be advanced just a smidge, and it made the world of difference in the way this thing ran. So, um, that's how to adjust the uh, timing after you put on an electronic ignition. And then tighten the bolt down good while it's running, and tighten the other side after you turn it off. And um, then you're done.